Well, hello, Wichita. I'm Councilmember Brian Fry. Welcome to this edition of Council Chat. Uh, you might not recognize my partner here to the left. This is Communications Manager Tyler Schiffelbein. Uh, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, no problem. I don't think we've done one of these together, have I, we? I don't think we have. This is my first time on Council <laughs> okay, Chat. Okay, well, so. hopefully I'll break you in or you'll, you'll be easy on me, one of the two, right? We'll, we'll go with both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. No, um, quickly, it's been an exciting week. We had the, uh, the Chiefs win the Super Bowl. So this is the first day on a Friday in like 12 weeks I've not worn red. Yeah. So it feels weird not wearing yeah. red on a Friday. A little so. different. Uh, <laughs> I know. I, I was excited, not only for the Chiefs win, but my daughter is a big Carolina Panthers fan, and she actually rooted for the Chiefs. And so for once, we finally rooted for the same team. Oh, was, there you go. That was awesome. That's, so. Now, we have a little superstition in our house. One, I didn't shave my beard all postseason. Um, I got to, that's a superstition. Yeah, you know? yeah. So finally got to shave it Monday. My wife was very happy. But then uh, last Super Bowl, we watched it at a venue – and we lost. The Super Bowl in 2019, we watched at home, and we won. So this time, back at we home. watched it at home. Nice, <laughs> nice. Now, you don't have anything like you don't change your socks, right? You... I'm not going to say. Okay. Yeah. okay. That's, probably not it. That's probably something we don't want to reveal. <laughs> well, maybe maybe it's good that I'm doing this one after the Super Bowl, so I don't have to worry about any smells. <laughs> that is a plus. That is a plus. All right, well, let's get to uh, the items we have for next week's agenda. Um, a couple of key economic development drivers. One is a renewal with our Greater Wichita Partnership uh, annual agreement with them. Uh, this is the GWP was formed back in 2015. It was a combination of services, at the Wichita Chamber, uh, Greater Wichita Economic Development Group, uh, Downtown Wichita, to try to get a group effort on retaining businesses, attracting new ones, and really just consolidate services. And it's been very successful in the seven years that we've had the GWP. Uh, they've helped generate over 12,000 jobs, um, about $2 billion, in, about $2.5 billion in capital, and a $600 million annual payroll to the community. So it's, the ROI has been fantastic. Yeah, and talk a little bit about those efforts. I mean, you just touched on it, you know, how important economic development is and that we're yeah. reaching out to these businesses and assisting them to stay or come to Wichita. Oh, it's critical. And not only just the businesses, but also the talent that we need to operate those businesses. You know, we're in a dogfight with Tulsa and Oklahoma City and Kansas City. So GWP not only identifies those businesses here that are wanting to grow and how we can help them, but then those businesses that might want to come to Wichita because we have such a, a great workforce. But in parallel with that is recruiting people to fill those jobs. And so GWP uh, has been very successful in that um, over the last seven years. And so this would continue that. They would add some additional efforts as it relates to that talent attraction, some increased marketing, especially in some of our uh, aircraft manufacturing trade shows and so forth, um, to, again, to recruit what we do very well and bring some of that in. So, uh, you know, this is an annual agreement. It should be uh, hopefully renewed pretty easily. But, you know, people always ask questions about, you know, those economic development partners and what's actually working. This one has a fantastic ROI. It's proving it. Yeah, so. absolutely. So, And then in tandem with that, we have uh, Wichita Independent Business Association, their annual contract with us, and they focus more on that small business development and making sure that there's resources to help those growing, you know, because not everyone starts out as a spirit or a textron. You know, they, they, start they had out, to work up to that they point. Were, they do. And so finding that next jewel, that next one that could be at that capacity, you know, they need help. They need resources. They need talent recruitment. Um, that is, those startups need that support. And that's what WEBA does for us. And so this contract would help with that, that continual uh, retention visits, um, seminars, et cetera. So yeah, very good. Now, two, two very important things for economic development. And again, the ROI is there. They're working. Yeah, continuing to add jobs to the community yep. and uh, really helps out a lot. So what else we got coming up? Um, so, you know, one of the key things that we have is infrastructure and taking care of our bridges and roads and streets. And so um, there's an area of town up, it's in District 6, it's called Bridgeport Industrial Park, uh, 29th Street North from I-135 to Broadway. Um, there's been a lot of success up there from Pearson to Dold, uh, Hormel, yep. uh, Johnson Controls, uh, and then that industrial park with Conco and a few other, there's a lot of traffic. 
up there and a lot of uh, driving on those roads and big rigs, all right? And so it's created uh, some challenges. Um, those roads need to be improved, need to be safer. And so this would be a contract to start designing that and accommodating for all that growth up there. So it's a very successful part of town and, and just need to stay ahead of it so that we can continue with that growth. So that, that would be one uh, infrastructure design project. And then just taking care of our bridges. We've got three bridges that need some significant repair. Um, First Street Bridge over the Arkansas in downtown. Um, some of the concrete is eroding and needed to get that repaired. Uh, the John Mack Bridge down on South Broadway. There was a fire a couple of years ago um, that some, some folks set, and it created some damage. And then there's another bridge over MacArthur down at the Big Ditch. So making sure those bridges are repaired, um, so that initiates that contract to get those uh, rehabbed and fixed up. You know, those aren't the, the sexiest projects <laughs> no. ever, but we, no. they are very important. I remember we both worked at Channel 10 at one point, and uh, when I was there, the, the bridge collapse up in Minnesota. Yeah. You know, it was oh, yes. Proper maintenance. Very tragic, yep. So it's it's just one of those things It's a must that we have to do to make sure to keep yeah. our uh, residents safe. So. Yeah, and, and one of those bridges, uh, the First Street Bridge, is such a critical piece of our downtown corridor. You know, we've Kellogg Bridge <clears throat> is, was updated several years ago, and then Waterman and Douglas Street bridges look great. Uh, and then the Seneca Street bridge looks pretty good too. They have all design elements. First Street bridge has kind of been that last one. But first off, we got to take care of the repair. Yeah. we got to get it safer to drive on. And then maybe we can look at some aesthetic improvements. But um, So yeah, bridges aren't um, sexy, but they're necessary. Yes, very, so, very important. I think we s- said the other day, staff said we have 223 bridges. In the city? I didn't realize we had that many. Yeah, it's it's crazy to think and about. When you have a river running through downtown, that helps. So. Yeah, yeah, and then all those other little creeks and canals yep. throughout town. So, yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, other items come up at council. You know, every year the council looks at CDBG funds uh, for housing, federal funding source that helps address problems associated with poverty. This is something that has to come before council. Right. You guys have to approve it before we can go out, out and apply for these funds. So. Yeah, and I think there's a slight increase over last year on this one. Um, Last year we had 977,000. This one's a little over a million. But this helps us with staff support um, for programs. Um, And then it also helps with things like summer youth employment, uh, summer camps, short-term vocational training. So it covers a lot of area, but it's absolutely necessary. And having that federal funding to support that uh, is critical. Yeah, we uh, on our podcast, we recently did an interview with uh, the housing team, and they talked about uh, the uh, way to work program and yep. just the impact that makes and, you know, the the lives that it changes. And so it's, it's very important. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, having those summer jobs for youth, um, you know, when we were kids, we delivered newspapers or mowed yards. Yep. Um, now there's so many more opportunities for kids to do uh, things that this additional funding helps fund that. So, yeah, critical. Absolutely. And uh, also, the one that uh, would apply to me and my family, you know, being a dad with little kids, uh, you guys are looking at zoning code for home daycares. Hopefully, you'd support more child care centers throughout uh, Wichita. Absolutely. So that is one thing that we've heard over and over again is that um, child care costs are expensive. They're hard to find. There's just not a lot of opportunities, especially for people that are wanting to get back to work. Um, so this would get us in line with the state regulations and allow those daycare centers uh, to increase capacity uh, to be able to have more kids, which would hopefully help families so they can get back to work instead of having to stay at home. So child care is expensive. My kids are uh, 20 and 17, so it's a different kind of expense now. Yeah. Um, but there's just not enough daycare providers, and this would allow them to increase their capacity. You know, we had a newborn back in September, and I we were looking well before that, and I was like, yeah, it's a, it's a year out before we even have an opening. Um, and then, yeah, they're all just really expensive. Yeah, and it's so. not uh, unique to Wichita. It's happening all across the state, too. Yep. I thank Council Member Tuttle for really doing a lot of legwork on this and, and helping pursue it and, and uh, trying to get this through, so... But yeah. it's absolutely necessary. If we want to continue to grow and have talent, we need child care availability. Yeah, so. absolutely. So I'm looking forward to that one. So moving on here, now that the Chiefs are done, <laughs> what are you going to do on the weekends? Oh, yeah, I know, right? Um, fortunately, spring is almost here, so start a lot of honeydew projects around yep. the house. Um, but there's just still a lot of activity going on in the district. I'm very excited about a couple of projects 
uh, Westlink Library. We start the design engagement next week. Um, the plan with that is to double the size of that facility. Um, and so uh, getting feedback from the community, what they'd like to see, and, and uh, hopefully get that underway pretty quick. We have to temporarily relocate the Westlink Branch Library, and that, I think, moves in April. But we want to get this started pretty quick. So excited about that. And then Proct Wetlands, um, there's an improvement project there to increase some of the facility. So those are two exciting projects that's going to take a lot of work and, and uh, engagement with the community. Um, but no, there's, there's never a lack of anything to do on the council. Yeah, there, right? there's plenty so of stuff. We still so. have the legislative session going on. Um, we test, I testified on my own personal behalf a couple of weeks ago for the license plate bill. There's an effort to uh, – Representative Hoheisel uh, pushed a bill forward to allow personalization of unique plates. So think of the Wichita flag plate and how successful that's been. Well, now if you can personalize it, now you don't have to choose between a personal plate or a flag plate. You can have both. Yeah, that's so that, that's, that's kind of cool. exciting. Yeah. Um, but there's still a lot of stuff happening in the session. Um, so we'll be back up in Topeka a few more times, I'm sure. Um, and then we've got our annual um, – trip to D.C. to lobby federal issues. So a lot of activity. Um, I'm kind of glad the season's over, so I, <laughs> I don't have to <laughs> have watch time. as much football, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's still go Chiefs. Yeah, so. go Chiefs. So, all right. Yeah, it's, I never thought in my lifetime I would see that. And now I've got Royals and Chiefs yep. in the last several years. So KU. KU. Yep. Don't forget that. So uh, And K-State in the bowl game. I mean, there's yep. there's been a lot of – we've been blessed recently to yep. have some really good sports happening. So – Let's just keep it rolling. Absolutely. All right. Uh, uh -oh. Now we do a question <laughs> of the week. Uh, so watch the screen. Let's huh? watch the screen and see what that is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather have a bananas for hands or bananas for feet? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is truly – and I, I don't know how to answer this question – I'd like your take first. So, I, yeah, uh, I made that graphic, so I, I kind of <laughs> cheated. I had a little more time to think about this. I didn't know I'd be on here. Um, so I would take bananas for feet. Wouldn't just, you just be slipping and sliding all over the time? You would, but then, like, if you have bananas for hands, you can't grab anything. So I don't... How about one of each? <laughs> that, there you go. You compromise and do Compromise? Each, but... Hmm. Uh, yeah, I... Man, that is so tough. Now you know that little minion banana is going to be stuck in your head. All day. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Um, wow. Um, I understand your logic, and I and I agree to a point. Yeah, because um, you could cover the bananas for feet with shoes. If I had bananas for feet, I would not cover it up. I would wear that <laughs> with pride. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd, I'd have to go with that. I'd yeah. have to go with bananas for feet, just that way I I could cover up and still be mobile. Yeah, but having the hands available, uh, and then again, if you had bananas for hands, I'd always be tempted to just take snack. A, yeah, take a bite, and then you don't have anything. Maybe just done. So <laughs> does it grow back? <laughs> I don't know, Megan. You you <laughs> gave us this question, <laughs> so <laughs> no, I guess they do not grow. So back. then you just have yeah, no bananas for feet. Yeah, and that's exactly. bizarre. I was expecting, you know, a favorite zoo animal or, you know, that that's just, that's really unfair. I've been enjoying these questions. They're <laughs> way out there. So. That was a slippery one. Oh. It was a, an appealing question. <laughs> oh. Uh, so. These come in bunches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time to wrap yeah, up, folks. Yep, yep. We're really off the so. rails here. So, again, thank you for joining us. Please be sure to subscribe for our podcast uh, and follow us on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get great entertainment content like this. Yes, can't beat it. <laughs> thank you.